Hello, my friends. This is Andy Orr at Falco Canine Academy. <laughs> you know, it's funny is that no matter what timer I'm using to go live, um, uh, they I don't I don't ever know when I'm going live because uh, when I watch the uh, replays, uh, it has a this one has a five uh, second counter five four three two one, and uh, quite often it, I can tell that at about three it actually went live. I'm waiting for the other three numbers to get counted down, and then. Uh, there I am. So uh, hello, I'm Andy Falco Jimenez uh, with Falco Canon Academy. I'm the owner and founder. Uh, and um, we have a few offshoots. If you didn't know that uh, over the years, uh, we have a facility right now in Argentina. Our trainer over there is Aldo Secchi. He'll be coming here in the next couple weeks. And uh, we're going to be really uh, hitting it hard in regard to training trainers and doing some high-end dog training stuff. So if you're prepared to go to the next level, so uh, uh, Gina, Derek, and, uh, and uh, everyone at uh, Falco Canine Orange County, um, they do a fantastic job. They take you to a place where you should feel good with your dog and have a respectful, loving relationship. And uh, surely they are fantastic. Uh, but uh, if you want to just simply go to uh, some other heights, if there's other things you want to do, uh, not that they would not be able to do them, but uh, uh, Aldo and I have been doing uh, what we do for a good number of years. And so um, if you want to do something else, uh, we, uh, and mostly Aldo, uh, because I'm on the consulting road all the time and going off and doing different places, uh, he will be here to really begin to uh, take people a little bit deeper into both being a trainer and uh, teaching the methods that we teach. Uh, there will be a cost, of course, uh, as you know, we're all in business here. And so, um, uh, and then in regard to your dog, if there's something uh, special, very special that you want to do, uh, make sure and let us know. It, it still could be in the hands of uh, Gina and, and Derek and the team, uh, but there could be some stuff in search and rescue, uh, whereas uh, uh, is really Aldo specialty, uh, protection and that kind of stuff, uh, high-end protection and that kind of thing. So uh, it's all available to you here at Falco Cannon Academy. Uh, detection, if you don't want to do detection, uh, again, uh, it's going to be all available here too. Hey, Andy Lockwood, uh, I didn't know you were a dog guy. Uh, <laughs> This is a show for dogs. Did I broadcast on the wrong thing? Now you're scaring me. Uh, I did click Falco Canine Academy, didn't I? Hold on. Now you, you got me worried. Don't leave me hanging. Let me know. I, I have a, a gentleman on. Those of you that don't know Andy Lockwood, he is actually part of another community uh, in regard to marketing and entrepreneurship and business. And uh, him being on this really scares me because, oh, nope, I'm right. I'm <laughs> <laughs> you had me a little concerned. Uh, if you have a child that is going for transitioning from high school to college, write Andy Lockwood's name down, find him on Facebook, him and his wife um, help you find a way to get your kid into college and all the things you need to know in regard to finances and how you can do it in a way that's not going to break the bank. And uh, Andy Lockwood and his wife are fantastic. Now uh, we're, we give each other uh, the, you know, uh, I was going to say some other words and none of the words I want to come up with. Can I say on live television? Cause this is live television, by the way. Uh, dog, dogs to watch. Yeah. Dog, your dog can watch it. Your dog will probably look with a tilted head going, what the heck's this guy saying? But anyway, uh, high school to college, you can have kids, uh, get a hold of Andy Lockwood, his wife. Uh, oh my gosh. They do a fantastic job. They have a fantastic show. They are funny. They are effective. Uh, they will save you money, uh, in regard to getting your kid into college. Uh, and I hope I'm, I'm selling uh, your uh, product, right? Because that is what you do, right? <laughs> All right, uh, so we're going to be talking about the question that uh, uh, one of our viewers brought up and asking me is no a command. And this actually could be for children too. So if, you, uh, if you're watching this by mistake, like Andy Lockwood, I guess is, I'm not sure why he's watching, but I'm glad he is because I love the guy, um, uh, is, is understanding whether no is a command or not, uh, because it can be confused as a command. We, we will often go to the no uh, because we want the dog to do something else. And I'm going to uh, give you a little bit of a talk. I can't tell you, uh, I can't go into the subject matter of whether no is a command or not uh, without just simply talking about what is a command and what uh, what it is you need to understand about commands and that kind of stuff. I, I'm, I'm kind of distracted by my, my video here because it's over here on the other window. And uh, I just got this floating head. I got this black shirt on uh, and uh, you, you can't see my shoulders because I'm sitting in a black chair and behind me is a, is a very, very, very dark couch. Too much attention. Get back to dog stuff. Sorry, Andy. Um, uh, 
there is my friend Andy. So if you can't see it, if you're not seeing the comments, Andy Lockwood, everybody, uh, write down that name. If you have a kid or you know somebody has a kid that's transitioning from high school to college, write his name down, uh, get a hold of him. They will take care of you for sure. Um, so uh, in regard to commands, we uh, get these confused. We say them too often. We use the wrong command for the, the, the wrong thing. We don't give a command when a command is necessary. We don't correct when necessary. We praise when we should be correcting and we correct when she, we should be praising. This is really the reason why um, uh, dogs have certain types of behavioral problems. Uh, an example that I often give, I just did something for the animal wellness um, uh, 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 not seminar. What's the word for it? It's uh, Animal Wellness Summit for the Animal Wellness Summit. Uh, and I talked about this extensively. And that is uh, in, in cases with dogs that are showing aggression at the doors towards the mailman or towards the UPS guy. And they're growling and snarling. Uh, what many people tend to do, even with, especially with the small dogs, is they pick the dogs up or they, they get on the ground with the dog and they pet the dog and they go, calm down, calm dog. And the dog's go, Arr! and they're going, calm down. Arr! And what is actually happening here, right? What is actually happening, right? The dog is getting praised for the aggression because you're petting him, you're using a soothing voice and everything in the dog's world is that when they get pleased or pleasure, I guess is one way to put it, when they get rewarded through the pleasure of you touching them and talking to them softly, they believe what it is they're doing right. And so the dog will do it more often and probably increase the aggression because they think you really like it. And so that is one thing that we do. We, we're using a correction when or a, uh, we're using um, uh, praise when we should, we should be using a correction. Uh, and then we're not using corrections effectively. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share my screen here and I'm gonna go to a PowerPoint presentation. I'm gonna pop back and forth uh, and uh, I will be able to see your comments. So keep your comments coming. Uh, and let me actually go ahead and put um, the link. If you want a, a report on training with love and respect, many of you who have watched often probably already have this, but those of you that don't, there's a link I'm putting in the comment section. Just click on that link. You'll get a, uh, a, a PDF uh, in your email. Um, once you put your name and email address in there, uh, the report will come to you and it is about, is a very short, um, report on how to train your dog with love and respect. Really, really important if you're gonna to continue to follow us and kind of understand what it is that we're doing here. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, make this solo. I'm gonna to go to my PowerPoint presentation and I'm going to, I'm hoping that you're seeing the whole screen. That, that, that is my hope and you can still hear me. That is uh, what I am hoping. Actually, I cannot see the comments because I made it big. Um, <laughs> let me see. I'm watching the delay on my phone to see what happens when, oh, yep, yeah, it takes over the whole thing. Uh, well, it is going to in a minute. I just want to make sure you can see it and it didn't do something else weird. Oh, it looks like it is doing something else weird. It's not showing. All right, I'm going to keep it here. So sorry about that. It did uh, block out for whatever reason. So I'm going to go ahead and keep it in this mode. And that's, it's not playing, but it's okay. You can see it. So when and how to use commands for your dog. This is really important. Uh, so um, we're going to touch on about no, whether it is a command or not. But let's first address the issue in regard to when and how to use commands. All right, so... Um, there, first you must need to know, there are two different types of commands. So there's verbal and nonverbal. And in relationship to dogs, what we tend to forget is that the nonverbal can and, and, quite, and quite often are more powerful than the verbal. Uh, dogs can easily um, ignore both but dogs are masters at reading body language. They're masters at, 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 at knowing what kind of contact is a contact that's uh, meant for them in a, in a pleasing way or in a negative way. Um, but verbal and the way that we say things and the tone that we say things, if, if we say, uh, no, no, or we say, stop that, right? That the dog doesn't know the word, right? The dog knows that your voice is very pleasing. So when you say, stop that, uh, the, <laughs> I can't do that anymore. I'm, I'm going to get stuck. Um, the, uh, the dog could be perceived that he's doing something good because your voice is telling him through the tone uh, and the, uh, the pitch and the volume that you like what he's doing, even though what you're telling him is don't do that, right? Uh, if you say, good dog, Right. And you do it like that. You know, the dog may think he's in trouble, even though you're saying good dog. So the verbal is more than necessarily the word. Now, the word helps us in knowing how we should say it. So if we're saying no or stop, then it's no, stop. We're saying it in a way that's very strong. If we're saying, oh, what a good boy. We know that in that word, 
uh, saying it in that manner matches. Those two things go together. But I've trained a lot of police dogs that when they say good boy, it sounds like the dog did something wrong. So uh, I have to really remind them that their tonality and their volume and the way that they say things is more important than the actual word that they are saying. All right. So know that there are two ways to command your dog, uh, verbal and nonverbal, right? Petting, touching, uh, um, uh, and um, picking up. Uh, those are all nonverbal and they're all ways of telling a dog that he's doing something good. Uh, hand signals, tell the dog to down. That's a command hand signal uh, into the up position is telling your dog to sit. Um, uh, he, uh, walking with your left leg means heel. Leaving with your right leg means stay, right? And so all of these things are really important to understand that they're nonverbal and verbal. And quite often, all you need is nonverbal uh, in many cases. Verbal is when you really need to get the dog's attention. All right, so do's and don'ts. Do know that uh, what commands apply to specific behaviors. You have to remember which ones apply to specific behaviors and uh, and make it consistent. We can tend to use um, down to mean lay down on the ground and down uh, to get off of me because you're jumping on me, right? And so we use down in two different situations and we do it and we probably say it differently when a dog's on jumping on you, hey, down, down, what are you doing? And then we want the dog to lay down. We say down or, or we could say down where we were a little bit more firm. And so all four of those are different, <laughs> but we're using the same word and we're not applying uh, it appropriately, right? Lay down and get off of me are two entirely different things. So um, off would be a good one to use to, for the dog to get off you and down would be a good one for the, for the dog to lay down. Don't randomize your commands, right? And then don't, uh, uh, you know, sometimes say it, sometimes don't. Uh, don't uh, use different words like in uh, back into police dogs when we would tell our dogs to get into the car. Some people would say car. Some people would say auto. Um, when we wanted to, when we really realized what we were doing, uh, that it was can be confusing uh, a dog uh, with the different commands. Uh, we wanted to make sure that there was a command for getting into his car, which would be um, auto. And then jumping into this car, uh, the suspect vehicle, we wanted to use car. And we made it specifically different because sometimes we would say auto, the dog would be released and he would go back and jump back into his police car. When we wanted the dog to clear a vehicle of suspects that may be hiding in the back seat, we wanted to use car so the dog would know that he's supposed to go in the car of the suspect. Um, but randomizing your pet dog commands, and in some cases uh, saying down, go lay down, place, um, relax, rest, um, and all those mean the same thing, go to your place and lay down, uh, it can get confusing for the dog. So we don't want to randomize the commands either, but we want to use different commands for the same type of thing, but, ran but use different ones if we want the dog to specifically do something over the other. Do maintain normal speaking voice when giving a command, even when you are mad. Oh, that is such an important one. Uh, with, uh, so often, uh, like our kids, we... Uh, use a different volume when we really mean it. How about if you really meant it when you said it the first time? What would that volume sound like? So if we said down uh, and the dog didn't do it, and then we go down and the dog didn't do it, and then we go down. And it consistently over the training of the dog, the only time we followed through with the correction or and when we took action was when we raised our voice, what would be the command for down? Waiting. Andy Lockwood, can you answer that? <laughs> uh, the command for down would be down, right? It wouldn't be down because the dog has come used to uh, understanding that the word that you use at that volume and at that tone uh, is the one that he gets corrected when he doesn't follow through, right? The other ones are meaningless. So you can literally teach a dog to ignore down, 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 and then only respond to down because that's the only time the dog gets corrected. All right. So maintain that normal speaking voice, even when you've said it once before and now you're correcting you really plots or plots. Yes. <laughs> Deanne. Uh, yes, it could be plots. It could be off. If you have a Malinois, it could be um, lock me. If you have a check dog, whatever that command for down is, you want to say it in the command that you want the dog to respond to and don't change it. So uh, it took a while for me to understand this as a canine handler, but when I did, I was the talk of the canine world at the time because I could command my dog with a whisper. 
Uh, and they, how did you do that? I said, well, I never used the, I never yelled. Uh, and so once I said, Fus sits platz in a quiet voice, because that makes more sense, right? When you're trying to be tactical and you're sneaking up onto a house with an armed gunman, gunman inside, and you're trying to get from two houses down to uh, the window outside the primary uh, home, um, you don't want to go uh, be walking along and then need your dog to down behind a tree and you're quiet every other way, right? You're going you're whispering, you're using hand signals with your SWAT team members, uh, and uh, and you're doing all of these other things to be quiet. But then when you want your dog to down, you go, bloods really loud. And now you've completely given away your position and the position of your team. Um, like bold plots. Well, yeah. <laughs> Andy, uh, you're down as strong like bull. All right. And so um, the, um, the tone needs to be that of what you're expecting your dog to follow. So uh, continue uh, always to try to get to try, not try, do only get your dog to follow uh, uh, your commands when they're in a in a in a way that uh, is just normal speaking voice, and you can even whisper. I was whispering my dog the commands, and he would. Dogs have powerful ears; they can hear a field mouse a hundred yards away. Do you think they can't hear you when they're about two and a half feet from your from your mouth? No, they can hear you. Um, it's just that they've gotten used to. And people think, "Oh, my dog's ignoring me," or "My dog uh, is not listening to me." No, he's waiting for you to give the command that he needs to listen to because that's the one you correct on. And so a whisper can be very effective and your dog can hear you, no doubt. All right, so um, don't only follow through after you have lost your temper, right? We wind up, we get mad, we make a mad face, our shoulders do something, and then the dog will do it because of what it is we look like, not because he's just simply supposed to follow the command. So don't only follow through, in other words, correct your dog when you have lost your temper. Uh, do correct from a normal position for your body, hands, back, and legs. So don't bend over, don't wind up and you know, and, and wrap the leash around your hand and then correct. It, you need to learn how you can correct from a normal position so that the dog doesn't uh, anticipate because what ends up happening, right? Uh, and you've all uh, done this or seen this. I just realized I have a typo here that I got to fix. It's going to drive me crazy. Do's and don'ts. I guess, I guess there's really no other way to put that. How, how else would you put don'ts if you don't have two apostrophes there? Hmm. It looked like a top typo. It, it stood out to me. Andy, help me with that. Uh, all right. So uh, do correct. Uh, yeah. And so we've had, we've seen these dogs, right? That they're, they're la, 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 la. And you go, go, go lay down. Uh, la, 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 la. And then you stand up and you, you come at them like you're going to kick your ass and they lay down. And so you get halfway there to where you're going to correct them. They lay down because they recognize that body language that you use before you correct them. Um, and, um, uh, oh, thank you. Uh, and, um, and, and so the dog learns, right? He never gets corrected because he waits to see when it is you're going to get into that position um, that um, you use when you're going to correct, right? So uh, you don't want that to happen. Learn how to correct from a positive position that does not, um, uh, you know, tip off what it is you're about to do. Uh, don't, don't wind up for correction. Same reason we wind up. And as we're winding up, the dog responds and then we don't end up having to follow through. And we, we, un, and we mistakenly believe that the dog is, oh, he knew it was coming. He knew he was supposed no, the dog saw you winding up. And that has become the, essentially the hand signal. You're winding up the leash in your hand has become the, the signal for whatever it is that you are asking him to do. Do use the correct tools for your dog and you, right? And so what we have to learn from this uh, particular point is that um, if you know that at this point in time with your dog that you need to have the tools on to uh, uh, to to uh, get the obedience that you're looking for. So say you have an out of control, strong uh, dog, a very heavy um high pain tolerance type of dog and you've decided uh, through either yourself or your training and, and, and somebody else that the, the pinch collar is the thing you're going to use. And right now, that's the only thing the dog is responding to. What you want to be careful is that when you're doing your uh, your day to day life with your dog, that you don't try to to get him to do something when you don't have that pinch collar on because that means you don't have the correct tools for your dog and you at the time you're giving the command. So you must refrain from giving the command until you have the tools that you need on your dog in order to be able to follow through.
And so if you have a flat collar on a dog and you know the dog just doesn't even respect the flat collar in the way that you correct it, and it's just not going to work, at that point in time, make sure that you're not going to put yourself in a position where you need to tell that dog to lay down. And the only time he lays down is with the pinch collar. So don't do it because you don't have the correct tools in place. Uh, the better you get at that, the faster your training will go. And then at some point, you won't need the pinch collar because now the dog's doing it based on what you're saying or what you're doing with your hands and not because he has the tool on. Uh, what happens is, is if you do this a lot where you say down and you don't have the tool and then you try to correct and it doesn't work, the dog learns very quickly. I only have to do this when I have a pinch collar on because that's the only time that he's able to get to me. If the dog never knows that because you don't give the command when it's not on, the dog will never learn it, all right? So uh, very, very effective. Uh, a pinch collar different than a choke chain? Yes, a, Andy, a pinch collar. Uh, and I, actually, I, I will, as I'm talking, I will show you the difference in, in uh, graphics here. Um, and so um, you wanna be careful that you are only, um, Again, doing what it is um, that you are doing in regard to obedience um, uh, when you actually have the correct tool. So I'm just finding some images here for Andy. And there we go. I found them. Okay. So, uh, I'll, but I'll come back to it in a second. Let me, let me go back to this thing really quick uh, and, and finish through at least at least bullets. Um, and uh, do be consistent. You want to be consistent with the, and I'm not just talking about you, with your family. Your family needs to be all on the same page as you are with your dog. If you've committed to your dog and you are being consistent and everything's going well, the worst thing that can happen is that you can go on vacation or leave for the weekend and leave the dog with some another family member who's going to ruin it all for you because they take the dog out for a walk, the dog drags them around, uh, the dog gets into a fight with the neighborhood dog, and that is exactly what you didn't want the dog to do. Um, you want to make sure that whoever lives in your house understands the do's and don'ts, and if they don't, then they cannot take the dog for a walk, it, especially during the period of time where you're trying to change the dog's um, uh, you know, manner of, of, of living that the dog is, 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 is going to be one that's obedient and not disobedient that d at least during that period of time, which is four to six weeks, it takes four to six weeks. If you're consistent and you're good to train a dog, a new behavior or change a behavior. So during that period of time, make sure that whoever is with the dog, that they are consistent in following through to exactly what it is that you are doing with your dog. All right, let me go ahead and come back to uh, be live because there may be other people uh, that uh, don't. Wow, I, it's getting darker here. And so all you're seeing is my face. You're so lucky <laughs> that you're seeing my face. All right, I'm going to share my screen. Uh, I got to find um, what it is I need here. Hold on. Oh, I'm going to need to pull them down. Hold on. Got a little, little, uh, I'm willing to work here for Andy because uh, that's the kind of guy I am. All right, so I got those pulled out. I only need the one pulled out. What am I doing? All right, Andy Lockwood. One more here. Da, 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 da. There we go. All right, perfect. All right, so now I'm going to bring this up. All right, Andy Lockwood. So here is what it, oops. Wow, how did that happen? Hello, there we go. All right, Andy, this is a pinch collar. A pinch collar is, um, it has prongs. Now this one happens to have the little uh, plastic gizmos. That is funny. I wonder how that, let me just see <laughs> what one's showing now. Wow, that's really odd. All right, so this one has uh, the little prongs on it and then it has little plastic things uh, on there that uh, supposedly protect the dog. I, I, not, I can't say that I really care for um, um, putting those little things on there. The, the, the power of the pinch collar is that it's uncomfortable enough to get the dog to stop doing something very strong, like pulling um, aggression in some cases, not always. Now, I, I can't, I don't have time to go into the whole thing. A pinch collar can either make aggression better or worse. All right, so understand that I'm not telling you right now I don't want you all to jump out there that have aggressive dogs go get a pinch collar just because I said it's for aggressive dogs. Not necessarily. It, it is, makes it worse for some dogs if you don't use it right. So you got to be careful on how you're using the pinch collar. But you can see that it has these prongs. Well, I did it again. 
There you go. So it has these prongs that you see there. Uh, and this one, it, it comes with those little rubber things on it. I would take those off because you want to make sure that it's most effective as possible. It needs to be worn correctly and it needs to be snug all the way around the dog's neck. It cannot be loose. The most common thing, uh, error I see with um, um, pinch collars is that they're too loose. And uh, I see it constantly. I even see it at some of our friends that uh, that I like to use uh, pinch collars in their organizations, their rescues and shelters, and they put pinch collars on their dogs. And all of them are putting them on too loose. It is um, unfortunate. I've I've tried to do what I can to get them to fix it. Um, it's just that it, it doesn't work. But anyway, they need to be snug for it to be work to work effectively. So that's a pinch collar. The other uh, one is the. Um, I'm gonna pull this down for some reason. That is really bizarre that it's doing that. I gotta share the other screen. So strange, but I will do it. I will do it for Andy Lockwood because that's the kind of guy I am. There it is. All right, and now this is a choke chain. A choke chain is um, a slip collar, right? It slips right through this little ring here. Uh, the, and the one on the bottom is called a live ring and the one in the middle right here uh, at the top, I guess, is uh, called a dead ring. When you don't want it to operate, you hook your leash to the dead ring Got to make sure it's 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 uh, it, it's fitted appropriately so it doesn't slip over your dog's head by accident. Um, and then the one you're hooked to when you want to correct the dog is the live ring. So when you're doing obedience, you'll connect to the live ring to be able to give connections and uh, corrections. And when you don't need to give corrections, the dog you know can the dog is kind of on, you're on a hike, and in some cases you want the dog to pull you up hills and that, that kind of stuff. You put the dog on the uh, the dead ring. Um, and in some cases with larger links, you can actually connect to one of any one of these other links. There's another thing called the fur saver, uh, that where the links are larger and you can, you can hook up to any one of the links on a fur saver, but this is a choke chain, right? So choke chain. And then the other one, I'll do it one more time. Just so you know, you can see the difference a little bit better is, uh, a pinch collar, right? So that one is a pinch collar. This one is. <laughs> I like doing this is a choke chain, All right? Two different ones and uh, they're used for different reasons and you need to make sure that uh, you're using them effectively. All right, back to the presentation. All right, so uh, next on our agenda here as we go through uh, commands and corrections, we want to make sure that you understand that, and this kind of goes along the line. If you don't have the uh, if you don't have the right collar on your dog, that your dog cannot be disobedient if you do not give a command. So during the training process, and even in life, is you want to um, uh, understand the fact that if you are sitting uh, with your feet up on the footstool, you're watching your favorite hockey game, you got a beer in your hand, and your dog is doing something that they can do, uh, but for whatever reason, you're thinking about telling them to do something else, like lay down. Um, you want to be careful that you don't say something that you can't back up, especially when you are in the beginning phase of training. The more you do that and are not willing to get up or there's a long delay between when you get up and correct the dog, the dog's going to understand that, hey, when he is like that, I don't have to respond. The dog will begin to file those moments away and the dog will know that I only have to respond when he's standing up with a leash in his hand and in a certain position, no beers in his hand, uh, and the dog will learn. The dog's very good at learning these things. So you want to make sure that no matter what, at all cost, that when you give an obedience command, that you do so only when you're set up to follow through when you're prepared to follow through. And I know that that's hard to do, but in the beginning, if you just remember that, then, um, then, um, uh, your training will go much faster, right? It seems like, oh, this is going to take a long time. No, it's actually goes faster. The better you are at being consistent, the better at that you are at only doing things when you can follow through and back it up. Right. Um, but if you do give a command, make sure you can back it up. Oh, that's a, I don't know why I even clicked on that. You must be, <laughs> you must be the same at home as you are in public and vice versa. This is, is a very much a, an issue with parents, right? Uh, at home, my, my dad, you know, oh my gosh, you, uh, you would love my dad. Uh, I'm sure because, uh, he was, uh, a very strong man who, when he spoke, if you didn't respond, then he would find the biggest thing that he could actually lift and throw at you and, and do it. Um, if he had a belt, he would take it off. If he didn't have his belt on his uh, pants, he would go and get it or make me go get it. Right. And so his follow through was good right at home. Now, I, I fortunately did not learn this, but 
uh, my dad taught me that if I don't get you, if you do something out in the public, I will not forget. And when we get home, I will take it, take care of it. But there's some parents that um, when they their kids learn that in a grocery store, they can act like a maniacs because none of what happens at home happens in the store. Uh, those kids begin to understand that, hey, gosh, it's so much. I love going to the store because I act like an idiot, an idiot. And you know, do all kinds of stuff and yell and scream and jump. And then they can do it at the park and they act like morons, but at home they are wonderful because they know that, that, you know, they're behind closed doors and anything can happen behind closed doors. Right. Uh, and your dogs are not that much different. A dog will learn that, uh, even uh, in training, if you go to training at Falco Canine Academy and the only place that you follow through and do all your homework is at Falco Canine Academy at the field there, then the dog will be great at Falco uh, Falco Field for at Falco Canyon Academy, uh, and the uh, translation for all this stuff will not make sense at home. All right, so you uh, want to make sure and understand that you just you figure out how to do it and make sure you do the same thing at home as you do when you're away. All right, now here's the big question that this all came to um, uh, to be because of this question: Is no a command? And the answer is no. Is not a command. It is a correction or a disruption of bad thoughts and or actions. And one of the main reasons why it isn't um, um, is because we use no in so many ways. Great comment, Deanne. Yes, exactly. Um, you uh, be consistent everywhere. Uh, no matter what, no matter what the best you can. Uh, so I would, I would tend to think that do not use a method that is, that would shock the consciousness. If you, if you've been listening to my podcast, train the dog trainer podcast, I did a podcast on, uh, on not shocking the consciousness of people that are, that are watching, uh, you, um, uh, as a trainer or, or learning from you that you understand that whatever you do cannot shock the consciousness. <laughs> and so uh, it's super important that you understand that. And so if you use it at home, you want to make sure that it's something you would, you would use in public. Well, I just brought up the long, wrong screen. Hold on. Here we go. All right. So no is not a command. It is a correction or disruption of bad thoughts and or actions. Um, we use no for so many different things. We say um, if the dog sticks his head in a trash can, no. If the dog doesn't get it, um, um, uh, doesn't lay down in time, sometimes we say, no, lay down. If the dog is jumping on us, we say no. And so the reason and most, and the biggest reason we can't use no as a command is because we use it in so many different situations. If, and this is the one time you, you could actually use this command, if no meant one thing, like lay down. If no meant down, then of course you could use no as a command, but it doesn't. In our world, when we say no, it means stop doing something or don't do that thing, right? And so no, it is not a command. What it is and when it should be used for is a correction. So the dog, you can, and I, I really don't use this as much as other people do, but if you say sit and the dog doesn't do it, you can say no, sit. And that no, what you can do to use that is when you say sit, if the dog is looking somewhere else and completely not aware that you're even speaking, like a child watching television, right? Sometimes dogs get, they see a squirrel and all of their being is with that squirrel, their mind, their ears, their snows, um, everything, right? The, the, the dream of catching that squirrel and crushing its little body is all on its head. And so you may sit say sit, but the dog doesn't hear it. The no that you're using can be one of disruption, disrupt the thought flow of that squirrel, that squirrel. Wow. I used to say squirrel as a kid. <laughs> I just reverted back to my 10 year old Andy uh, right before your eyes. Uh, and so no is the thing that disrupts the thought process of something else. And then you give the command that they're supposed to follow. So you say no, you can tell because the way the dog didn't react or didn't do something, he's probably not even paying attention to you. He did not hear it. Then you say no to get the dog's attention and disrupt whatever thoughts are going on in his head that are other that are uh, not related to you. And now once the dog is listening to you, now you say sit and the dog sits. So no is not a command. It is a correction or disruption of bad thoughts and or actions. All right. And so that is really simple. Uh, if you use no, you got to back it up with something you want them to do. Don't say no and leave them hanging. So if their head's in a trash can, you say no. And then you say here to get them away from the trash can. If you uh, if they're jumping on you, you say no. And you tell them to sit so they're no longer so they can't sit and jump on you at the same time. If you um, if your dog is barking at the door, you say no. 
and you get them to lay down so that they down near the door and not they're not up barking at the UPS guy or the mailman. So, uh, however, I would like I would suggest you if you can skip the no and just go straight to the command and the follow through if they don't do it. And so you're just you're, what you're going to do is take out that extra step that uh, you become used to. And because dogs will begin, well, they'll take advantage of every extra moment they can get at uh, barking at a, a person, an animal, a bird, what have you. Uh, and uh, just by saying no, you're just wasting time uh, to get to the correction because you already know they're probably going to do nothing, right? Um, but there there are moments that I've used no. There is, I just don't want you to overuse it as if it's a precursor that always has to be used before you correct because it doesn't have to be. If you say sit, the dog doesn't sit, just go right to the correction. You don't even have to say the word sit again if you do it within a close enough proximity of them not responding. So if you say no and in and, and, and this, and so the clap is going to be the correction, uh, uh, all right, instead of saying no. So, uh, so, Oh, actually, let me go back to my camera. Uh, so I'll get rid of this because that's the end of the, the at least that part of the presentation. Uh, so if you were going to say sit and the dog doesn't do it, I'm going to show you how how fast it should be that you give the correction. Sit. That's when the correction comes because that's how fast the dog can respond, right? So you say sit, the dog should be actually taking. As you're saying the S word, the dog should already be responding. Now you can delay a little bit longer if you want. So you can say sit. And it could be that close, right? It, there has to be some closeness to the, the verbiage. So the dog learns to listen to you more. And so the dog learns to respond to that word better, right? And so that, and so by saying no in between that, you're lengthening the time between the thing you actually want them to respond to, right? So if you say sit, no, right? You see you got more time and now you're not making the connection between the sit and they're not responding to the correction, right? You want them to understand that by not responding, the pain comes the discomfort comes the correction comes the upsetting you comes right and they need that they need to be close enough together so the dog actually gets it by putting a buffer in there like the word no you're making it more difficult for the dog to understand um uh about that all right so uh i that's why i don't use the no very often right um uh, if i can see a dog's thinking if i say sit and you see the dog go hmm and you can see a dog's thinking i will allow the dog to process the thing and respond to it. As long as I can see that he's actually mulling it around and I can actually see that he's taking action. You've seen me do this with detection dogs where the dog will get an odor and I'm waiting because I can see the dogs kind of going, oh, I'm supposed to do something. Gosh, what is that thing I'm supposed to do? Oh, I got to do something and I and I get my ball. Oh yeah, it's sit. And the dog does it. That's a long delay. But as long as the dog is continuously processing uh, the thought process on what it is he's supposed to do, that is way more powerful. You don't want to disrupt that with a correction or a no. You want a dog to think through it and then become successful. Uh, Andy Lockwood wanted to congratulate me on the High Heart Radio podcast thing. Thank you very much. Uh, out of all the places to send your podcast, it's the only one that, that takes time for them. It took me, it was almost a week. It was around four days or so um, for them to approve my podcast for iHeart I Radio. The rest, you can just upload and they don't care. Like iTunes, you can just upload any podcast in, in any manner. Uh, iTunes, I don't know if somebody actually listens to it or not, but I know that it's a bit of a process. You have to have a certain amount of uh, podcast. You have to have uh, at least, I think, somebody listening or something like that. I'm not sure what all the parameters are, but uh, there there is a bit of a, a process to be able to be on iHeartRadio. But yes, thank you, uh, Andy, and to all of you. Yes, if you go to uh, iHeartRadio and just type in, you can just type in Train the Dog Trainer, my podcast will come up it's called andy falco's train the dog trainer podcast and you will find it on there and thank you for mentioning that andy um so uh the no is not a command it is uh a correction or disruption of bad thoughts and or actions all right so uh there's your answer gina and anybody else who wanted to know uh there's a couple of pictures here on my thing i i don't there i i did this um um uh a slide deck many years ago <laughs> and i can't remember why these pictures are on there but that's my daughter it must have been it's many years ago because my this daughter uh this i have two daughters this daughter right here is now nine and in this picture i think she's two so that's how long ago i put this presentation together uh what has that been uh nine seven seven uh, years ago so set, this is about seven years old uh this uh particular uh presentation uh there she is walking the dog uh, if a 40, what, a, what would she have been? Probably about 40 pounds there. That dog was about 90 pounds of muscle, a police dog that bites and does bomb work. And there she is healing the dog. You've uh, probably seen videos of her uh, working that dog. Um, 
Here is an obedience class. You see everybody leaving with their left leg. Left leg means heel, except for the third lady. It looks like she's leaving with the right leg. That's why the dog's staying. <laughs> All the other dogs are kind of, oh, no, not this one. But left leg means heel, right? Uh, and the right leg means stay. Your dog is in, in the perfect heel position, one of our Pitbull customers. And again, this is another park. We haven't been to this park in probably five or six years. Yeah, so that's how old this presentation is. This is uh, Greenbrier Park in Brea, California. We were there for about five years. All right, so his right shoulder, the dog's right shoulder on the other side of, of his body, obviously, is in line with the left leg. That is a perfect heel position. Uh, and here is same with the down. The dog's right shoulder right here is in line with the, with the handler's left leg. And the dog is still and facing the same direction as the handler. This dog over this black dog right here, that dog is extremely dog aggressive uh, and despises other dogs. But yet here he is across from a Chihuahua, two Chihuahuas actually, and next to another German Shepherd. Uh, and we were able to get that dog to stay in his home. And she was able to take the dog for walks. I wonder what they're doing now. Uh, I think the dog's probably not with us still because it's uh, been so many years at that time. I think the dog might have been about four or five years. Uh, here's one of our graduates back from back then. Uh, I see back in the background, is that Dan? No, I don't think it is Dan. Uh, our trainer, Ellis, uh, uh, Elias at the time, he's handing the certificate. Man, this is so many years ago and I'm seeing faces I haven't seen in a long time. Uh, and here's a couple. We train all ages and all types of dogs. And this fluffy, fluffy dog was taking advantage of this poor couple. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we, uh, we got them through training and they did a really good job. So those are some of our customers. All righty then. So that's it. That is the, um, and uh, thank you for asking those questions, um, uh, Andy, because they are pertinent to understanding what a difference between a pinch collar and a choke chain is. They're two completely different tools. I appreciate that. Uh, Deanne, thank you for your comments and joining us. I can see a number of people that are joining and, uh, and, and um, many of you are not commenting. I, I love it when you're on and commenting. Um, we broadcast out to about eight different Facebook pages. So if you're on another Facebook page and you're commenting, I'm sorry if I don't see it. Uh, I only see the comments when you are actually on the Falco Canine Academy Facebook page where this broadcasting is uh, originating from. So uh, if you're commenting, I'm sorry, I will see them as I sign off and I'll try to respond to anything in regard to a question. All right, so uh, I have a, I, I know I have some uh, detection dog uh, videos uh, taken from last week that have been, <laughs> they're just so good. And uh, I wanna be able to show you them i will try to make time tomorrow uh to show you those uh trainings of charlie our bed bug detection dog there's a little bit of delay uh the owner uh the handler for that dog he has a couple things he has to take care of so i got a couple of weeks i think uh, extra with that dog so we'll be doing some stuff here and there uh with charlie to uh uh, to take you uh, to some further steps than what we would normally do. And, and it'll be really fun. So we'll be able to do that. And uh, and that's it. And again, uh, all of you that have joined me, thank you. I appreciate it very much. Uh, again, if you like our podcast, you've not had a chance, please make sure and give us a comment on our Facebook page. Uh, and some people say they can't find the five stars. I, I Showing that when you guys uh, like... Um, uh, the Facebook page that I'm that the ones that are saying they can't find the stars are somehow I'm getting five stars. I'm not sure how that works, uh, but please uh, make sure and uh, let us know that you like what we do. If you don't, and you're not willing to give us five stars, uh, even if you, if you do find them, uh, please don't give us a one or a two. Just let me know what it is we can do to, um, to change your mind. And that would be great. I would appreciate not having to, to uh, drop our percentages down. If it's something that we can talk through and, uh, and see if we can't come to some agreement or an agreement to, to just simply disagree. Uh, that would be awesome. Um, may I suggest a little background lighting next video? <laughs> No, no, uh, you, you can see me, you can see my face. It just got the, the, I'm not used to the time change. It's only, uh, five o'clock here, five fifteen. It, it, it should not be getting dark until eight o'clock. So when I started this, there was actually still light outside. It is pitch black outside already. Uh, and so the lights, uh, went out in Georgia and I'm in actually in California. Uh, but, uh, no, it got very dark. So sorry about that. Is there a six star option? No, but just knowing that you would give me one, Andy, I do appreciate it. Uh, uh, and so that is great. I really appreciate that. All right. To all of you watching, if you have any more questions, they, those have been great questions. This, this question about whether, uh, no, as a command was a great one. The one about the bonker method was great and, and just keep the questions coming. The things you want us to talk about and, uh, and bring up into a Facebook live is, um, is, uh, what I live for. I love answering your questions, right? Uh, without your questions, I'm simply giving you the things that I think you want. When you ask me a question, I know that I'm giving you the information that you want. So, uh, please keep them coming. Uh, I want to congratulate Gina. Her daughter uh, just graduated from the police academy for Fullerton Police Department. Uh, I saw the pictures of uh, her mom uh, pinning her badge on her uh, uniform. Brought back such great memories about when my uh, my uh, ex fiance 
<laughs> pin my uh, my badge on my uniform and uh, shaking hands with the chief and the director of the police academy and all the people that showed up. And uh, just getting through the academy is um, I've, first getting hired to make the academy and then making it through the academy and graduating is such an accomplishment. I just uh, I want to congratulate uh, uh, Gina on a terrific job of raising her daughter. And, you know, we often give so much credit to the person who did it, but uh, quite often, uh, unless they're doing it because their parents were horrible and they're doing it because they, in spite of their parents, which is not the case with Gina, she did a great job of raising her uh, daughter and, and she's taken on um, uh, the profession of law enforcement, which uh, today is uh, not uh, not that easy. And uh, and I just wish her all, wish her all the luck. And... Um, and uh, wish her the best. All right. Uh, thank you for watching. Again, uh, if you need anything in relationship to, in relation to uh, your child going from high school to college, uh, take a look at what Andy Lockwood's doing. Uh, you you won't uh, wait, be wasting a moment of your time. You will be gaining uh, probably some some money uh, if you uh, connect with Andy and, uh, and and look at what it is that him and his wife are doing. All right. That is it for me uh, from uh, uh, Falco Cannon Academy. And I will be seeing you at the next one. Take care and talk to you later. Bye.